So today we are going to discuss the uh, cell junctions or uh, the membrane junctions. Cell junctions or the membrane uh, junctions are basically the uh, connection between two neighboring cells. For example, this is one cell and this is another cell and there is a connection. For example, this is one connection, this is another connection, this is another connection. So this is another connection. So this is a sort of connection between two cells or it might be a connection between a cell and the extracellular material. So on this basis, there are basically uh, two types of uh, cell junctions. Uh, they may be intercellular junctions uh, or the junctions between two cells or they may be the junctions between a, a cell and the extracellular material. Tight junctions, gap junctions, adherence junction and desmosomes. Tight junctions, adherence junctions, um, desmosomes and the gap junctions. These are basically bit, uh, the intercellular. They are between the cell. This is one cell and this is another. So the tight, the desmosomes, the adherence and the gap, these are the junction between two different cells. They unite two cells while the focal adhesions and the hemidesmosomes they are basically the uh, connection between a cell and the extracellular material <clears throat> there are basically three main types of um, cell junctions the number one is occluding junctions second is communicating junctions and the third is anchoring junction the anchoring junctions are further divided into actin filament junctions and intermediate filament junctions. Actin filament junctions are further divided into adherence junctions and focal junctions, while intermediate filament junctions are divided into desmosomes and hemidesmosomes. So uh, now we will uh, broadly discuss uh, what are the proteins that are making the uh, different types of uh, cell junctions, uh, what are their functions uh, in the human body and where they are present. So the first one is the occluding junctions and the example of occluding junction is uh, tight junctions. So this is uh, basically tight junction and tight junction is an example of intercellular junction and it is present between two different kinds of cells. There are two component of uh, there are two components of uh, tight junctions. One component come from one cell and the other component from uh, the other cell and they unite here and make a ridge. And these uh, junctions are is basically made of different types of proteins, which may be occludins, claudins, uh, gems, singulins, simplexins, zo one two three. And basically, the names are not important. You do not need to remember the name, but there have been mentioned. Some of the um, proteins in the junctions are uh, membrane proteins, and some some are cytoplasmic uh, proteins. So, and what are the basic functions of uh, tight junctions, which is an example of occluding junctions? So the basic function is the strength and stability to the tissue. They unite two cells and give it the strength. One cell is attached to the other, and it uh, that's why that's how uh, it is given some strength. A lot of cells are attached with each other in this uh, way. The other um, the other function is selective permeability. Tight junctions uh, does not normally allow uh, substances to go from one cell to another, but they are they sometimes allow some substances to go from one cell to the other cell, and does not allow other substances to go from one cell to the other. Another function is a fun uh, fencing function. Fencing function is basically uh, it's the ability of these junctions to maintain the constituent lipids and proteins which are making the plasma membrane, the cell membrane, so that they remain in fixed quantity and they retain their position. And that's why it is uh, acting like a fence and it is not allowing the proteins or the lipids from the plasma membrane or the cytoplasm to change their positions. Then it is giving polarity, it maintains the cell polarity. So tight junctions also provide a polarity to the cells because it is made of proteins and proteins have got some charge. So that's why it uh, gives polarity, it makes the cell polar. Then uh, blood-brain barrier. Uh, 
we may discuss uh, in neurology that there is a barrier between the blood uh, and the brain and it's important because the blood brain barrier does not allow everything to enter the brain and it's a very selective um, it allows some substances and does not allow other substances and that blood brain barrier is basically made of tight junctions which is an example of occluding junctions so um, uh, the main example of tight junctions in the human body are epithelial linings of the intestinal mucosa and renal tubules so in the intestines and the uh, kidneys they are present in the uh, mucosa and the renal tubules and another example is uh, endothelium in the capillary wall and choroid plexus in the human eye so these are some examples the mucosa the kidneys and uh, the mucosa of the intestines the kidneys the renal tubules then the capillary wall and the choroid plexus after that we have the um, then we have the gap junctions so gap junctions uh, they are made of protein connexins and gap junctions are an example of communicating junctions is the name indicates the communicating junctions basically allow a slight communication or allow substances to move from one cell to another cell and that's why that's why they are known as the communicating junctions or and i know an example is gap junction they also help in the propagation of action potential action potential is basically an an impulse it is like an electric current and it basically moves from one cell to the other cell uh, uh, with the help of these uh, gap junctions so on the example of uh, gap junctions are basically epithelial lining in the heart and intestine uh, so, uh, then another uh, third type of cell junctions we have is that of anchoring junctions anchoring junctions uh, are further, further divided into two types they may be of actin filaments or the intermediate filaments the actin filaments are further divided into adherence junctions and the focal junctions while the intermediate are divided into desmosomes and hemidesmosomes adherence junctions these are basically they are cell to cell they attach one cell to the other some proteins from one cell uh, come in front of proteins and uh, from the other cell and they get thickened and some fibers um, which are basically actin fibers they are attached to them and it helps basically in the formation of epithelial lining they are also present in the heart and in the epidermis we are not going to discuss them in detail how they are functioning in the heart and how they are functioning in the epidermis but they help in the connection between two different cells then we have the focal junctions focal junctions are made of protein integrins adherence uh, junctions are made of cadherin the proteins which make the adherence junctions are cadherins while the proteins which make the focal junctions are integrins focal junctions they are basically not intercellular they are uh, junctions between a uh, cell and its extracellular material so it's uh, basically uh, it provides cell attachment to the basal lamina it attaches the cell to uh, basal layer and uh, it is also present in the epithelial lining epithelial lining may be in the intestine in the capillaries and you know, some other places in the human body then we have the desmosomes and desmosomes are made of protein cadherin they also provide cell to cell attachment and uh, they are also present in the epithelial lining in the skin so uh, desmosomes uh, you can see here they are also um, present in the uh, intercellular they are also intercellular uh, junctions and the, they are more thicker than adherence junctions and the protein filaments attached with them are basically the intermediate filaments they are not actin filaments and they uh, are present in the epithelial lining and the skin and finally we have the hemidesmosomes the proteins forming them are integrins they also provide cell attachment with the basal lamina or the extracellular material and they are also present in the epithelial lining so uh, we will revise it uh, quickly uh, cell junctions are basically uh, intercellular or uh, between the cell and extracellular uh, material 
tight junctions, adherent junction, desmosomes and gap junctions are basically intercellular, they connect to cells, while the focal and hemidesmosomes, they are present between a cell and the extracellular material. Uh, then uh, further we divide cell junctions into three main types, occlu uh, occluding junctions you know, or the tight junctions which are also known as zonula occludens and uh, they basically uh, does not allow movement of substances but they give strength to the cells they allow selective permeability fencing they uh, make the cells polar they um, are making the blood brain barrier then uh, we have communicating junctions which uh, another which uh, is presented by the gap junctions and they allow the propagation of material from one cell to another and finally we have the anchoring junctions which basically anchors the cell to each other and the extracellular material which have further two types the actin and the intermediate filament um, the actin filament uh, junctions are adherence junctions adherence junctions which are intercellular and focal which is between a cell and the extracellular material so the adherence junctions basically provide the cell to cell attachment while the focal provides cell to basal lamina attachment and basal lamina is basically present outside the cell and then we have the desmosomes which are made of cadherin proteins they also provide cell to cell attachment and the hemidesmosomes which are basically half the desmosomes the desmosomes uh, we see both uh, sides but in the hemidesmosome one side is taken the other is not taken and uh, they are basically providing cell to basal lamina attachment or to the extracellular uh, matrix attachment they are basically present in the epithelial lining there are a lot of uh, things to discuss uh, regarding the cell uh, junctions or the um, membrane junctions but we are not going to detail the pathology the pathophysiology and the diseases in which they are involved because they will be discussed in the coming lectures Hope you have understood uh, over there, you have got a slight idea of the cell junctions. Thanks a lot.